Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning. How's everybody doing? I'm so excited to be with you this morning. Uh, and excited to talk about something different this morning than what we've been talking about for the last three weeks. So I'm excited to talk to you about what's near and dear to me, uh, agent safety. So we're getting into the spring. Uh, what in Denver is the high season, um, which is getting out and showing homes. Uh, in Denver, we do a lot of um, getting out into the market in the spring and showing homes, doing open houses, because the weather's getting better. In the summer, we're constantly out and about. And so what happens, our sun starts ringing and we are out with buyers more and more and more. And so that means we really need to start taking our safety into account. But not only that, not only our self safety, we also have some other things that we need to take into account. Or I have two phones by and I don't have them muted. So I'll shut the other phone down. So anyways, we need to think about other aspects of our business that we need to be safe with. So we're gonna go over those things too. I put two links in the chat. Um, they're on the NAR website. So if you've never gone into the NAR website, just plugged around, uh, do that. Like look into the things, the resources that we have on there that are free. Just check into that every once in a while. So how do you, what, what things do you guys do when, when you set up a show? Like, do you have a, um, routine? Do you call a friend? Do you use the showing time beacon? Do you research that buyer? Do you always know the buyer? Do you get a copy of their driver's license? Do you pre-qualify them with the lender? Does the lender have a copy of the driver's license? Like what? Do you guys have something that you do? Do you have an implementation? Does anybody on this call right now do something? Does anybody want to volunteer? Anyone? No? Do you want to know what I do? Yes? No? Maybe? Had Shay? No? Okay, but I'm just going to tap it. Okay, so I get a lot of cold leads. I, If I don't already know people, I have a lot of sphere buyers. Of course, I've been in business forever. But I also have a lot of sphere buyers and I have, yes, meet them in a public place. Right. But even if I'm meeting on the public place, I'm still going to take them into a house, right? So into a vacant house, it is, right? So I immediately set them up with a lender and I immediately put them into an app called Forewarn. Does everybody on this call use Forewarn? If you don't, get it. Uh, my board, so I'm I'm part of here in Denver, there's two different boards. There's DMAR, which is Denver Metro Association of Realtors, and then there's South Metro Board of Realtors, and that's the one I'm part of. And they provide it for us. It's called 41. And it looks like um I don't even know if you can see it, but um it looks like I don't know if you can see it. It's that little one right there. Four one. Look it up on your phone. It should. Yeah, it absolutely. I don't know. Look, it should work in every state because I can look up people from Washington on four one. Um, and I think it's nineteen dollars a month if you don't, if your board doesn't provide it, or three hundred dollars a year. Um, but call your board and see if they provide it. And if they don't, ask them why they don't. Uh, I think they should. I think all boards. That's just my personal opinion. Um, 
And the way you do is you can type in a person's phone number. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that. I was, it was the last year. And I got a phone call. And this man said, and I'm happy to be a man. I tell me a woman, I'm not being like, whatever. But I got a phone call and it was a Thursday night. And this man said, hey, I want to go see 1234 Seller Street. I don't remember the address. And I'd like to go tonight at 6.30. And I said, okay, um, do you have a lender? And he said, yeah, I've been pre-qualified. I'll send you my my lender letter or whatever. And I was like, okay. And so I immediately, like I always do, light religion, type to this one. The guy had 56 um, counts of, he'd been in prison, had 56 counts of aggravated assault. He'd been to prison for um, holding for like basically rape, holding people against their will. Um, the list went on and on and on and on and on. And there was no way and anything that I was going to go and meet this man by myself. So I called him back and I said that a male member of my team was going to meet him because I immediately had that feeling. So I said, hey, Bob is going to go meet you tonight the, you know, at 6.30. I have, have another meeting at 6.30, so Bob on well, my team is going to meet you. And he immediately said, oh, I'm sorry. That won't work. Can I meet you in the morning. So it was a type, right? That he didn't want to meet Bob. He only wanted to meet me and it was a vacant listing. So that's the very first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is go and get the forewarning out. The other thing I'm gonna tell you is to always carry a, either a highlighter or something like this, a Cooper stick, right? And you put it in your pocket can't see it. If you always have pockets on, like I, if you're wearing a dress, if you're wearing a blazer, if you're wearing pants, you always have this in your pocket. Like if you're opening the door, it's in your pocket. If they get behind you, you can always pull out of your pocket and you can always put it in their knees, you know, and it stops them. You could do the same thing with a highlighter, right? So if they could walk behind you, you could always turn around and jam it. That'll stop them long enough for you to turn around and go the opposite direction. I suggest that if you are a real estate agent, and I, and I hate to be talking negatively, but every single real estate agent on the planet should call a self-defense um, class in their community and they should take it. Because when you are opening a door, you are in a position, usually, like a black box is usually against the door and people are behind you. Am I, am I correct? Yes. Black boxes aren't in a position in which people are in front of you. They are behind you. So you should always take a self, self-defense self class and they're always going to tell you to carry something like a highlighter because the highlighter is the same thing. You can put it in people's knees and it will stop them, right? The same way as one of these little cooper sticks um they will tell you that a stun gun right is bad and i will tell you a story about a stun gun and how they are bad but it does scare people right and it does shock people um i always carry one but, um anybody want to hear um a bad story about a stun gun yes no maybe does does Anybody not want to hear it? No? Okay. Stun gun, uh, stun gun is bad because you have to be physically touched by the person, right? 
And it's then going to also bad because if that person is on drugs and you hit them with it, it probably won't do anything to them. Right? So they're probably not going to feel it. A person that's not on drugs, it will probably stop them. Right? And if you get a stun gun, it has to be the level of a taser. So don't go just get a stun gun if you're going to get one. It has to be a very powerful stun gun. And they don't really sell them hardly anymore. You have to go to an army surplus store to get one. It's level at. Anyway, this is just me telling you. I, mean, I don't know. Um, if you're going to get one, do your research. Um, if you're going to get a stun gun, you might as well get a taser. Um, but you have to be fairly accurate shooting them. And they're only good for one use. Uh, and then they will replace them. Um, anyways, that's just sweet for thought. Safety, that's like self-defense. Um, and you should be very, you should know what you're doing if you're going to get into these. But guys, this is a really serious subject. There's been lots and lots of issues with realtors out there. Don't think that you can just go into houses. Does anybody here have sixth sense? Have you ever walked into a house or have you ever walked to a house and had that feeling? Well, I've been in business for 25 years and I can tell you numerous stories. I could probably write a book on the things that have happened to me in my life. And then, and then, you know, I have, I have, um, I've had several things happen in my life that I'm probably not going to go into on this call because I don't have time, but um, I have, yeah. We've had some moments. I had an issue last year in which I knew I shouldn't go into the house and they did. And I almost didn't make it up, but I made it out because um, I had my wits about me. Um, but I'm telling you, it's, it's a passionate subject of mine. Don't get into this situation in the first place. Um, okay, so we have stun guns, tasers. I don't want to go into getting your um, actual gun thing because it's such a controversial subject. And I have, you know... I have my feeling on it. And there's other people that have their feelings on it. And I don't want to go there on the Asia power huddle, like do your own thing there. Um, and I have, I think there's legal ramifications on being in people's houses with it. I don't know how that could go. So anyways, um, think about that. And then every different state has different laws regarding that too. So I don't think that's an appropriate subject to honor this necessary on this Zoom necessarily. Or, um, but be careful, right? And think about that. Oh, and as a listing agent, when you are listing a property, can we do all the buyer's agents on, in the entire nation a favor? Can you have the discussion with your sellers and say, please open all of the doors in all of your homes for shows? Once upon a time, about three years ago, I was showing a house in Marksburg, Colorado. 24 hour notice, the seller was probably 95 years old. And he kept all of his doors shut. And he forgot that he had a showing the next day for my 24-hour showing. And this story, I will tell you, it's kind of funny now. It wasn't funny then. Uh, we showed up for our showing, confirmed showing, had the lockbox in the end, and I had a family with me, a doctor, um, her husband, and their two children, um, an infant and a three-year-old, and knocked the door really loud, rang the doorbell, opened the door, we showed the entire house. And the last the last room in the house was at the very back of the house. And we had gone through all of the hall, hallways, um, showed the basement, showed the second floor, 
And then we got all the way to the back of the house and that was the master bedroom or the primary bedroom, right? Sorry, excuse me, I've been in the business so long that I say it wrong. Anyways, the very last house, the very last room, opened up the very last room and here is this 95 year old man and he's sitting in his lounge or his rocker lounge chair with a shotgun, right? Pointed at. <laughs> so, yeah. The doors being shut scare me to death. <laughs> let's keep the doors open and let's remind. And then also the 24 hour showings, especially if you have older people, let's remind our older people on the day of to that they have shown. That was that the realtor safety thing would really like make me happy. Um, doors open while we're showing. Um, okay, so NAR uh, has an article up that I really like uh, this app. And it says, you know, one of the things that we really need to look at is when we're doing real estate traction transaction this is like a big deal guys especially when it comes to liability if you have a team or even if you're doing business yourself if you're sending emails back and forth and somebody hacks your email and they track it back to you um let me tell you there's been like two or three instances in the last three years in which a title company had a breach and a wire got taken from a buyer and like $150,000 went missing on a transaction that we were involved with or $80,000 got taken and it was two different title companies, right? Like, and they weren't mine, but there was there was a breach and there was moments in there where I had minor, minor meltdowns and I have said to my team over these years, like I have a um, one password that all of my team is required that they have to run our team through. So they're required on all of our apps and all of our emails that they have to sign in and through one password. And if they have a cell phone that they're required to have a personal VPN, if they're out and they have to use their personal VPN to sign in through, right? Um, NAR is saying that we should be using DuckDuckGo and not Chrome to be running our business through because it says it doesn't collect our personal information and it blocks trackers. And it blocks passwords. Um, it also says that we should be using Link for cybersecurity insurance against a range of attack, uh, a range of attack attacks. So Blink is cyber insurance insurance. So cybersecurity insurance. Kind of an interesting thing to think about, right? Realtor safety, this world is changing so fast that like it's pretty hard to keep up with. Um, for Warren, this app is a big one. I think we really need to think about it. And this article goes over quite a bit. Um, Crimometer. So as you're putting as you're putting buyers in, like years ago, years ago, I did a class. And um, years ago, I did a class, and the attorney that was doing the class said, you should never give um, school stats on one listing if you're not going to give the exact same school stats on every listing, right? You guys have heard this before, right? And if you give school stats on one listing, you have to give it from the same source on every listing. You can't give like list reports on one and then give it from 
like whatever data on the other. It has to be identical. And if you're ever caught, like there could be some sort of like investigation. I don't know if that's true or not, but it always kind of scared me. So NAR came out on this link that I put in the chat and it says, use this thing called Crimometer, right? And it says, if they ask about crime, give them Crimometer and they could do their own research, uh, research on the crime in a neighborhood. Because if you've noticed, right, Realtor.com, Zillow, they used to have the crime staff. They don't have them anymore. There you go. Autumn just put something up there too. So very cool, Autumn. Um, yeah, that's the same link. So anybody can join Blake and get that same link. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. So yeah, you can, all of that stuff is in there now. It's really cool stuff, guys. So when you're thinking about safety, think about your personal safety and think about your business safety. You need to be thinking about can your email, can your computer, can your client's stuff be attacked in any way? How can you lock this stuff down? It's not just up to the title company, it's up to us, right? So are your team members, are you locking down your information and their information, right? It's not just in the disclosures, it's in everything. So let's let's do the best we possibly can. Anybody have any questions? Um, I know that we have a self-defense class going on here in Denver. I don't know where everybody's from. Um, but look into it. Let's 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 be safe as we go and show some buyers. Darcy, Molly, anybody? Dads? No? You want any stories? Any fun stories? Six men stories? Yeah? Okay. We have seven minutes, so I will tell you crazy stories. Okay. Or basically be. Okay. Six months. Um last year. I was supposed to meet a woman at her house in Elizabeth Carla. And it was just supposed to be her. She had to sell her house. She had to sell her house in a hurry. I was four minutes away from the house. She calls me. She says, Hi Jen, I'm really sorry that I can't meet you today. I have to go meet my son. And I'm already gone. My ex-husband is going to meet you. Okay. That is already a no-no for me. But I was already out there and it was a 40-minute drive. So I pulled up in front of the house. There is a very gnarly looking man sitting in the driveway. And he has an attitude. And I pull up and I walk up. And the house is extremely dirty. And my sixth sense says, do not go into the house. But I do. And um, he leads the way. And as I'm walking into the house, I can already tell that things are going on in that house that I don't need to be in the house. And he gets in front of me and we're walking through the house and he won't let me into certain doors, which tells me that I definitely do not need to be in this house. And yeah, so I'm standing there and I'm trying to take pictures so that I can get him a cash vibe for the house. And he says, but, you know, can't open that door. I can't do that. And I'm like, okay, I think I have enough information. And I turn to walk out the door and he says something very lewd to me. And I said, I've had enough. I'm gone. And he says, no, no, wait, come back. Let me show you this room. And I say, no, I'm gone. And I 
book it out of that house. And it was good that he was much, much slower than me, right? Um, but that was a very, very close call for me. And I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, it was much worse than that. So um, your sixth sense is a very, very, very real thing. And you should listen to it. And you should never go into the house if you even have an inkling. And, you know, 16 years ago, we used to do bank bank um, foreclosures for Countrywide Bank of America. And I walked into a house one time and I was very afraid. Just the moment I went to the house, I was very, very, very afraid. I did not want to go in the house. And I called my ex-husband, I called the bank, and I said, I'm afraid. I don't want to go in. And they said, does it look vacant? And I said, yes. And I took pictures through the windows and I opened the door and I took pictures from the front and they said, just go in. And I said, no. So I didn't. And I brought a crew back with me and we found something in the basement and it happened to be a body. And so I'm telling you, there is always a reason that your sixth sense is telling you something. And so safety is very, 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 very important. And your sixth sense is always telling you. So listen to it. Um, anyways, that is all I have for you today. Get forewarned. Get it on your phone. Always look it up before you meet somebody. Try to get them pre-qualified. Let somebody know. Going down now as a beacon. And um, yes, be safe. All right. Have a great day. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.